My wine diet works perfectly. After three glasses, I don't think about my weight anymore. Welcome to Shave and Butcher for a Friday shave, and it's going to be a traditional one this uh, this beautiful Friday morning. Mitchell's Wool Fat. Fat Friday is what we're having. This is pretty much the only soap I bloom. Uh, I don't bloom it a lot, but I bloom it a bit. So I put a bit of water onto the top of the brush. The razor <clears throat> is traditional as well. It's also from Yorkshire. This is Wade and Butcher, a full inch barbers for barbers use. Smiley blade. It's uh, it's pretty wedgy. It's not a true wedge, but it's it's definitely not a hollow. It has a barber's notch, and the scales were made from from horn buffalo horn. This is uh, this is pretty lovely. You can see the light coming through the scales, and that was done by Niklas Gudmundsson, my my home meister. The brush is also English. It's uh, Simpsons, and this is the Chubby Chubby 2. Super thick badger knot. Beats up most of the soap you, you put into it. Pouring the bloom water out. And I'll put it on my face. Do a bit of appreciation. Maybe this is enough. I'm sure Doug Bear could make a beautiful lather out of that. So here we go. So Friday, uh, <clears throat> thank the Lord, it's Friday. No, I've, I've had a pretty good week and I still have Friday to work because it's morning. Um, but you know, weekend is nice. Got a party to go to on Saturday and we're having a yard sale in the neighborhood. So I guess I'll get sucked into that stuff. It's my wife who takes care of, of business usually. So busy weekend. Busy weekend is the plan. We're, we're foaming ahead with all this goodness. That is Mitchell's whole fat. So yeah, pretty good. Um, I just listened to a podcast about the war in Ukraine. So... <laughs> Cool, change the subject from thank god it's friday to killings in the ukraine but it is pretty grim I don't, I don't know how people outside europe uh, get information about the war but it's still going on russia russia started out in the ukraine by invading and taking over a peninsula in the south called crimea and and then gradually increased activity in the Ukraine, especially in the east. And on in February this year, they flat out invaded the Ukraine. And it seems the plan was to march to Kiev, which is the capital. And, you know, just take the government out put in their own people and take over the country. It's a little bit unclear why Russia wants to do this, but apparently, you know, it appears that since the Ukraine and the Ukrainians want to live a good life, get closer to Europe and the European Union and NATO, you know, Russia wouldn't, wouldn't have it. So they invaded the Ukraine, which is a big country. I think it's 45 million people, although quite a few have fled, and it's a, it's a big area, very rich in a lot of things like forestry and agricultural products and so forth. But you know, they, they it was part of the Soviet Union and it was well, time to take it back, I think the Russians figured. Uh, leather's coming on coming along very nicely but it wasn't that easy so they've been struggling like hell i mean russia is is a big military power but they're incredibly poorly organized 
as, as Russians are in almost anything. Um, I have friends in Russia. I don't mind Russia usually, but to put it in, I've got a friend who says Russians, Russians can't organize a piss up in the brewery. So that has proven very true when it comes to this war. Can you see all this lather? Jesus. It's incredible. In spite of the fact that the brush eats up a lot of it, and in spite of the fact that most of what I started with was foam, I have enough for five, five shapes. So I'm gonna add water. I'll add quite a bit. You can add as much as you want to. Still gonna turn out to be a good lather. Mitchell's is very forgiving, I feel, provided you've loaded enough. So you can play around with it and have, have a lot of fun. I want a, a pretty wet lather, as you would, you will know if you watch the channel. So, how is that? Hmm. Yeah, looking pretty good. So since the Ukraine, after the initial attack, sorry, uh, pushed back <clears throat> and are actually taken, taken back territory from this mighty war power, um, the Russians got, got stressed out and, and it's now gone from a military operation to a full-scale war and and Russia are forcing people to get drafted. I mean, basically, everyone who wanted to go to war, you know, volunteers and professional militaries, have gone, and Russia's really messed up. So now they're, they're drafting the people who, who don't want to go to war in the Ukraine, and it's pretty grim. Good lather, almost everything came off. That's a good sign of the lather. There's almost no, no foam left. So, Russia officially said they would draft 300,000 soldiers who've, who've done some kind of military service, but it appears that the target is closer to a million people. And there are protests all over the country. They usually aren't because uh, the, it's very, it's the, the, you can't organize a protest. You can't participate in a protest. You can participate. It's allowed to be one person in a demonstration, in a protest, but you're not allowed to actually mention the war. If you call it a war, you go to prison because it's a special operation just to to free free the world from Nazis. So Ukraine has a has a Jewish Russian speaking president who Russia now accuses of, of being a Nazi. Very good. So people are panicking. Because a million people, that's, that's quite a few. And what happens is the ones who can escape, escape, you know, the ones who can afford a plane ticket, you have to pay $8,000 to get out of the country. They, they flee so a lot of it's basically basically rich kids who have parents who have the financial financial means to get them out of the country. Um, if you can't flee and or if you're poor, you stay and, and you, you get drafted. Plus, um, 
they have Russia's put up draft offices or drafting offices close to the land borders. So anyone who tries to leave who appears to be eligible to go to the front in the Ukraine gets drafted. So it's a risk to, to try and leave the country, you know. <sighs> it's a mess. And yeah, so there are protests in, all over the country. Not massive, but you're seeing them. And it, it's women, a lot of women, who protest against the war. And their sons or husbands or cousins or whatever getting drafted. And if you get drafted now, you will be, your military competence will be low because anyone who had a high level of competency has already gone to the Ukraine. So we're already after just a few days seeing the Ukraine um, hitting, hitting the new troops coming down and, and there are coffins already on the way back to Russia. So we'll see what happens. Might be more protests, but it, it appears, you know, you'll have tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands dying, uneducated, militarily, militarily people with, you know, and who, some may have a gun, some may not at the front will just get slaughtered. Much like how Russia fought in the Second World War. You know, uh, millions died. They just marched ahead like a zombie army. <laughs> and, and, and that that was a little bit effective in the 1940s. But now, uh, if you try that, you know, you, there's an air, air strike and your platoon is gone. So if you put money on Russia winning the war, hmm, your chances may have improved a bit, but not by a lot. And, and it's just going to be more blood, more deaths. And at the same time, the leader in Russia is out talking about using nuclear arms and other weapons of mass destruction. He says, you know we have them and if we have to use them, we will. So, interesting. Um, and a new kind of scare, tax, scare tactics is going on as well, where there are two pipelines uh, transporting natural gas from Russia to Europe. Uh, well, there are several, but there are two in the, in the sea, in the Baltic Sea, passing just south of Sweden. And um, there were four explosions the other day. So now, and they're both broken. So now natural gas is emerging. In the Baltic Sea. And it appears, I mean, it's obviously Russia who blew up their own pipelines, <laughs> classic Russian style, uh, to prove that the world is against them and they're a victim. But also and primarily to show that they can hit important European infrastructure. Because there are a lot of things buried, for example, in the Baltic Sea, power lines between countries, other natural gas lines, um, you know, internet fiber cables, what have you. So look what we can do, right? So they're trying scare tactics and it doesn't appear to be working. Because Europe remains united, 
Yeah, even the countries who are pro-Russian and pro-Putin, like Hungary and I guess mainly Hungary, they're also, you know, Europe is closing the ranks, which is good. Italy will be interesting because they have a, they have a neo-fascist party. I th actually think they call themselves that. Who uh, who will be running the country? They are very pro-Russian and pro-Putin. So we'll see. That that could change things a bit. Because some decisions on sanctions and things like that have to be unanimous in the European Union. So that's good because it protects democracy and so forth, but it also makes us pretty slow in decision making. So we'll see what happens, but you know, many, many more will die. So how's that for a topic for <laughs> Friday Shay? No, sorry about that, but you know, please don't forget about the war in the Ukraine. Uh, the US is acting very much in in close cooperation with, with Europe and the European Union. So it's it's a unified message which is uh, which is which helps a lot. And obviously that's important, you know, putting pressure on Russia. There's Witch Hazel. Is it, maybe I should use something more interesting. Well, I'm using that. I am using that. So thank you, America, for not leaving Europe to its own fate. It is important, and NATO and the whole, that sort of thing is important too. Uh, should put on a scent, really, shouldn't I? I've been using this quite a bit lately. That's the, from Pen, Penhaligans. This is William the Inimitable. You know what? I'll, th I'll use Dear Harris uh, Mayfair. It's not a, a dark scent or earthy scent like I usually use. It's, it's quite light, but it's, it's lovely. It's beautiful. So... I'll put that down here. I don't put it on where I shaved because then, you know, the poor skin has had enough. So I just put it in this little pit where, where the aroma rises to my nose and to the to the to the world. Okay, that's it. Slava Ukraina, and uh, have yourselves a beautiful weekend when you get to it. See you soon. Stay sharp.